Hello and welcome to so two of A Practice Odyssey. I am Jen. Hi, I am Alex. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're two flute players who met, what, it's like five years ago now? I think so. Whoa, five years five year ago. anniversary. We're coming up on our six, sixth anniversary. anniversary. My gosh. You, when you have a friend that you can go get a cappuccino with at any point during the day. <sighs> Pretty you gotta much. Hold on to them. Pretty much. You're set for life. <laughs> anyway, it was the beginning of a beautiful friendship. So here we are. I'm currently in Cambodia in Southeast Asia. Pretty cool country. You should come and check it out if you got time. And where are you, Alex? <laughs> Uh, I am currently in Germany, nice. in southern Germany, in a little town called Ravensburg. This is our show, The Flute Odyssey, and our method of the week is a little gem by a French You may have heard of it. And just all around awesome man called Marcel Moyes. For our flute listeners, you may already be familiar with this book or Marcel Moyes. Marcel Moyes was born in 1889 in Saint-Amour, France. This was around the same time that Eiffel had built his iconic Eiffel Tower. Uh, at the age of 15, Marcel Moyes um, moved to Paris to live with his uncle, who was a cellist. And this uncle helped introduce Marcel to French society, and uh, he started um, developing his flute with taking some lessons at the time with the uh, flutist from the Paris Opera. And uh, mm -hmm. only w after about a year of lessons, he was accepted into the Paris Conservatoire at the right. Hold on, wait. What do you mean? He like only had been learning the flute for like one year. Well, see, this is where. I'm a little fuzzy. It says that Marcel okay. Moise's flute was purchased when he arrived in France. That would indicate what? that people, that he learned how to play the flute upon his arrival in France. However, I've seen some other accounts that say that he was already taking lessons, piano and flute, before he came mm -hmm. to Paris. So I'm not really certain... There might be more in one of his biographies, which unfortunately I did not have the opportunity to read before this recording, but now I will. But yeah, but yeah it was interesting. So potentially Marcel Moise learned how to play the flute in a year for, for playing. Well, he was like only 16, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, he was only 16 and he won his first prize at the age of 17, like first prize, first place. <laughs> After two years of flute playing. Right? <laughs> so he was at the conservatory. He studied with Philippe Gobert, who our listeners might remember was the co-author of The Complete Method, Flute Method um, by yeah. Paul Taffanel and Gobert. Yeah. So that was his teacher. And while he was in these initial years of musical development, he got to perform in the shadows of some of the biggest uh, music names at the time, including Lucien Capet, Nadia Boulanger, Nelly Melba, mm -hmm. and also according to some sources, Rimsky-Korsakov. So, Whoa. Um, so do you know who Nelly Melba is? She did not make Melba toast. I or maybe do. she did. I don't know. She's like one of our most famous exports from Australia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Apparently he... I think... Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just I was just thinking the character of Nellie Melba make a moonlight appearance in Downton Abbey. She did, and it is a topic of she hot did, debate. Didn't she? Mm hmm Yeah. I don't want to spoil Downton Abbey for anybody, but it was a very for pivotal anyone, but, scene. I mean, if you want some music history, mm -hmm. go and check that episode out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because Downton Abbey is definitely a real and it's happy. so historically accurate. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful show those costumes are amazing oh, they are gosh, so good but we should point out that Downton Abbey does not endorse this message anyway mm, yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> we're not sponsored <laughs> we're not sponsored <laughs> some ways his uh, career was blossoming and blooming he took over teaching at the Paris Conservatory after his teacher left and was teaching at the Geneva Conservatory too and then World War II happened so which kind of mm. put a stop in his career um, because during, he tried he had already tried to enlist in World War One and had was um, rejected due to his um, like ongoing cases of pneumonia. And he had like very str he struggled a lot with lung pro issues and problems. And so, the you know, and then here he is older, too. He's also married and has a child who is old enough to participate in the war. Um, so it was wow. just a very bad time all around. Um, but then uh, after all of this like tumultuous time, 
1951, Marcel, his son Louis, and uh, daughter-in-law Blanche came to America and helped establish the Marlboro Music School and Festival. And uh, it's still going on as of today. And there are many famous musicians who have uh, been there and performed, including Hilary Hahn, Murray Pariah, Mm. and Yo-Yo Ma. Mm. On top of all of these accomplishments, Marcel Moise wrote many flute books on how to practice, and these include De La Sonorite and Tone Development Through Interpretation. He also taught at the Paris Conservatory, as we mentioned before, and at the Montreal Music Conservatory. And some of his most noted pupils include James Galway, Paul Robeson, Trevor Wye, William Bennett, and Carol Winsons. Marcel Moyes passed away at the age of 95 in 1984. Jen, would you like to maybe summarize a little bit about the book for our listeners, like in case they've never heard of De La Sonorite before? Method De La Sonorite, it consists of five sections. First one is timbre and tone in every register. So there are eight sections in all, four in the low register, and four in the high register. And what we could do is either pick one a day or one in each octave per day. The second section was suppleness of tone, especially in the low register. And there are 16 exercises in all, and we practiced one a day according to Moises' recommendation. The third section, note attacks and slurs. There are 36 in total. Um, and each with four subsections of articulation. So um, Moise recommends doing all four subsections in one go, but only working maybe 20 minutes a day maximum because it's pretty tiring. Section four focuses on fullness of tone. There are four groups and he says only one group a day, again, because it's really tiring. And finally, section five, was management of tone in interpretation. So there were four pieces in all, and they had three keys underneath to be transposed into. And the idea was to play one piece with the transposed keys a day. So for the past two weeks, we've been doing sections one to five for six days a week with one day of rest. And that sums up. Moise de la Sonorité. Week one. Do you want to start or shall I start? Uh, I can start. I must say, Jen, week one compared to what we did last week was so easy. I mean, (laughs) not easy. It was also quite difficult, but just the amount of time and how much, you know, we had to do for each exercise was reasonable where I wasn't, you know, doubting my sanity. Uh, I was so good, and I really enjoyed how he describes um, before each section uh, how how he wants it to be practiced as well. Mm. I thought that was really, but I really enjoyed that, like how he broken it all down. And I have to say that every day, it only t- to get through everything, even when I had to repeat sections, it only took me around an hour, maybe a little longer to get mm. through it all. So mm. hour, maybe an hour and a half, depending on how long I spent on the tone development bit at the yeah. very end. That just reminds me, um, like it also made me think that while I was practicing, I had just finished this book um, that was talking about uh, meditation for happy people or how to be happy like a, a Buddhist. Uh, but they were talking about how part of meditation is that... You, the idea is you draw your focus to something, for example, the breath, and then your mind gets distracted and you bring yourself back to the breath. Mm. And I kind of applied that to this. So whenever my tone would get bad, I'd say, no, this is part of the process. This is why I'm doing, you know, long tones, for example, in number one for so long. Instead of like what I would do in the past was get really upset and be like, oh, other people do this they don't have issues with this why do I always get distracted why is this so hard for me I just accepted hey that's okay that's what this exercise is for come back and then go forward and that really helps me a lot and I I really started to enjoy number one where in the past I've really you know I've done it but just kind of because you know it's a way to help check your tone and your pitch so but, but for me week number one just coming to terms with my uh my relationship with number one de la sonorite was very 
it was very insightful and loving and it was so cool to hear it, like how it improved every week so um, but yeah how did you find your week one my week one um yeah it was it was definitely how do i put this challenging for my brain in a different way than Tafanel and Gobert. So Tafanel and Gobert, I think, was so overwhelming that my brain almost kind of gave up and I kind of <laughs> curled up into a little fetal position and decided that um, who on earth could play all of this at once. Um, Moyes, I think, took it to a whole new level mentally so he'd slowed it down so much that there was no way you could avoid everything that you were doing wrong it's great but also brutal at the same time so um oh yes i made a conscious choice to do everything without vibrato so there's nothing to hide behind all i've got is the sound and yes it just magnified all of these uh things which normally you can like kind of ignore as you and actually as i got through the week I felt like I was getting worse, but really? I think, yeah, I, I, I really did. But with, on reflection, I think actually what was happening is my ears were getting better. So I was listening better to what I was doing and realizing more about where I could improve. I, it was, it was good. And then, but then also the more I was listening, the more I realized I can fix this. This is this is getting this is getting better. Yeah, you can. So yeah, there was that kind of like <laughs> slump after the first like four or five days, and then the last day I was like, oh no, actually, yeah, I can see that there is some improvement. But I, I really liked. Um, I'm trying to think what was my favorite one in the first week. The first week I really well, like you, I really enjoyed the detailed instructions from Moyes. Like what we struggled with, I think, with the T and G previously was the fact we were just given the, all these exercises and no and like an outline. no direction and how to practice them well um without yeah. going into autopilot whereas Moyes doesn't mm -hmm. let you get away with it he's like it's so he's so precise on what he wants you to focus on and look at with all of those um exercises like the jaw position you said that was really cool so I played around a lot with that and um and also, I think the really big thing was the dynamics in all of these. The dynamics was very oh, illuminating yeah. in just how small my dynamic range was. And, mm -hmm. and uh, number two is great in terms of that, particularly in the low register. With and then Absolutely. also the breath yeah. control. Eight semi breathes at the count of 60 with like as big a dynamic range as possible from PP to Forte. Planning your breath so that it could last that long, but with a really big dynamic range. That was really useful, and actually, I could see that really coming in useful for something like Le Primidi or, or or like those kind of excerpts. Like oh yeah, that. absolutely. Especially when it comes uh, to the section E of each of those, which um, for those listeners who haven't done this, it's where you have to do these little um, hairpin dynamics, but through <laughs> like eighth notes. Yes. <laughs> and you really have to plan your breath because you can easily overdo it on one and then you're out. I also like how he, he just, he kind of acknowledges humanity in all of his exercises. He's, he, he says, he writes things like, oh, just do one set of these because it's very fatiguing. And just this idea of don't just push through it like a machine. You're a human being you know, take it mm -hmm. at your own pace. I really, I really liked that kind of philosophy which underlay all his writings, which I guess is why I kind of wondered that about the biography with all his, with the health issues he struggled with through his career, like yeah, how no, that absolutely. played into, yeah, how his methodology kind of came through. Yeah, because in a great, in a, you know, in a perfect world, we all have, plenty of hours in the day and we're in perfect health sometimes mm. you have health issues come up and that does affect how you're able to practice so yeah and it was nice that he he was you know he would say one exercise a day is sufficient never do more than two uh, yeah. with regards to some of the sections like never do more than two are you a masochist what are you yeah doing? yeah so. yeah <laughs> 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 so that was really good and it was really interesting to do number five um which is the section for tone development and interpretation mm. because it's totally 
a, a jumping point into his book that is all about tone development and interpretation. Although I have yeah. to say, I think my least favorite part of week one was doing all of those at eighth note equals 60. It was so yeah. hard. Because I didn't realize uh, when we had first set out that doing it, we had to play through it three times. So I did not do every key for the piece every day because it was just very detail oriented and to try and get all the little nuances. Yeah. Oh, it was, yep. it was, it was, uh, yeah. Number five, I realized how bad my transpacing is. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> wow. It does take a really long time. So that was your most hated one. I think well, so. I mean, I, I enjoyed word. all of it. Hardest. And I, maybe it was because I went in with the expectation of, oh, this will be great. It's an actual piece. You know, there's a chance for it. Mm -hmm. But then just the really slow tempo. And then he says you yes. have to do it like with the mentor. Like he's like, you, you should be very, you know, st stringent with the quarter note equal or the eighth with the metronome. Yeah, with the metronome. Yeah. I forget. I'm pretty sure yeah. I said that. If I've read that wrong. Um, and then. No, no, no. He yeah. does. He marks it in front of every piece. Yeah. And so that combined with, you know, just trying to get the phrases and do it all with a beautiful tone. I mean, it was, yeah. Yeah. Very tricky. But what I liked, like down the bottom of the last piece, he says, oh, I've done some dynamics and breath marks, which are a bit awkward <laughs> yep. um, to make it difficult. Week two. Yes. So week two. Jen, how was your week two? Well, I have to say I was on holiday for most of it. <gasps> yes. Where we were had you? We school break. Yeah. I was in Chiang Mai oh in gosh. Thailand. Oh just drove through the forest. Wow. They grow coffee up there. <gasps> did it smell Alex amazing? That place. Oh my gosh. It did smell amazing <laughs> and there was good coffee everywhere. It was great. But yeah, we were in a hotel and as we were discussing last week, they haven't invented a practice mute for the flute. People get so. on that. We need practice mutes. Yeah, someone. Not all of us can afford to, to stay in a place where we can practice. <laughs> yeah, or a hotel could develop better soundproofing hotel for musicians Ooh. with like soundproof it's like those hotels where you can bring your pet we kind of like need hotels where you can bring your musician yeah. <laughs> but yeah i avoid third octave practicing oh, yeah. i have to say in in yeah small rooms yeah not great when we took those lessons um jen and i got to or had the opportunity to participate in a master class with paul edmund davies of while back and he yeah. i was talking to us about the practice of the classical symphony fourth movement in hotel rooms which i loved oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah yes. and how he how he practiced it how he how, how he told us that he would practice it in the hotel was just um not playing it through the third register so still doing the fingerings and blowing air through the flute but just not enough air to make the third register speak yeah so week two um i guess like coming back so i was away for like five days so i i didn't i took that as my rest day so i did the last two days when i got back um and it's actually like really nice way to come back to the flute after a yeah after break. after a break you kind of just see where it's at you're like all right that's where I'm at right now, and then accept the flaws and yeah, and start working on it. Like, okay, yeah, what can yeah. I do to fix it, or what can I do differently yeah. to help make this better in the future? And number four, exercise number four. That was that was that was the struggle was real with that one. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Why uh, didn't I talk about number for, how much I hate? Oh, uh, the struggle. Yeah, I probably because we were waiting for now. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> the struggle was real both weeks. Number four. Probably we were just in denial. We just didn't want to think about it. <laughs> Talk oh about the gosh. other ones. Number four. Wow, it's like you sit there and it's it's the shortest one yeah. of all of them. Oh yeah, for those who are following along with their de la sonorite right now, which we should probably say <sighs> in the future, like get out your copies and follow along as we talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, yeah, it looks so easy. Yep. Like you do the, yeah. it gives you nine notes starting in the first octave to the last octave. And then you just mm -hmm. practice amplifying the tone from pianissimo to piano and then piano yeah. to mezzo forte, the mezzo forte to forte, yeah. then forte to fortissimo. Cause then it's not, cause no longer can I be like, oh, this, this dynamic was maybe a little too loud. It's like, no, the next one you have to start it. And that's your piano. And then also you got your metronome sitting there with intonation yep. going and you're just like, holy cow, could I be any more out of tune right now? What is happening? <laughs> 
Is, is this the one where he talks about, <sighs> yeah, to adjust the pitch and the quality of the note to be practiced in relation to the others? Yep. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yep. It was, because with the other ones, he doesn't really bring up too much attention to pitch or intonation. It's kind of an indicator, uh-huh. like, like, not stated strongly, but you should. But this one, it's like, yes. you should be in tune. And it's like, this is what this is for. And it was, oh, my yep. gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so many headaches. I just wanted to quit so many times halfway through this. So, or yep. just break it down instead of doing pianissimo to like doing it in four separate sections, just doing it once. <laughs> like pianissimo to fortissimo. Yep. I did like, again, his concession. It's kind of like, um, like when you go to an exercise class and um, they... Uh, they say, okay, now we're going to do this crazy kind of like 15 minute long plank. But, you know, for the beginners or the intermediates, you can, you know, start on your knees and then, you know, kind of, these are the different variations of the move depending on how extreme you are. He kind of gives you that option in number four in that he's like, okay, maybe you might want to start for those who are just beginning or like finding this super hard, start in the middle register, which is very friendly and then kind of go to the extremes on either end. But yeah, holy moly, high and low register. I just realized how limited my dynamic range was. What? Yeah, yeah, for me, it's same thing. And then like keeping it in tune. Mm -hmm. It just brought that all to light although i do have to say i don't know if this is verdict territory but i have to say my third register after doing them that was so in tune it was so awesome that's good they work but they're the worst (laughs) and they were mostly (laughs) they were relatively in tune without me having to do much um like extra thinking yeah. Nachdenken in German. Yeah. I think. Um, but it's, yeah, it was uh, in the moment. I, it was so hard. This was the time I really had to, you know, really focus on what I had told you in the first week where I was like, it's okay. Accept how it is. Ex- Come back. Work on it again. Because there was definitely another voice in my brain saying, stop. This is so annoying. It's never going to be any good. Da, da, da. So, yeah, yep. it was... Uh, who would have thought one page blanked from memory but very effective yes yeah <laughs> yeah so how it's was your tough, second week alex oh my second week was good it was entertaining uh like we said <laughs> okay number four was was hell sorry <laughs> for our listeners we don't swear too much on this podcast but uh, <laughs> it was really good um i was really enjoying the attacking and slurring of the notes this week um that should be exercise number three um and i was noticing how much it was helping my intonation on a lot of the pieces Uh, i currently i'm working on the ebear concerto Mm. slightly for an audition also just because i feel as though i haven't worked on it a bunch and when we have to pull it out for an audition it takes a bit of time and it, especially with number two, I feel as though doing like all the different, like the decrescendos to the higher or the lower notes mm, and then the attacks yeah. on the note really helped me with a lot of the intonation in the second movement. So, and then also in the first movement, when it comes to some of the ways that the note should be articulated, like I was really happy that I was doing these workout. I really struggle. I used to be quite good at uh, articulating with the tongue out, but I find that it's really it's hard to do that in tone for myself so that i was really glad that i was able to work on that again i like that he says it's also excellent for playing bach so i pulled out the partita oh, bach yes. partita classic and i did a little bit of the the the, the tongue articulations on that as well oh, which was nice. quite fun so just to help supplement number three um, and also the partita is always fun to work on and try to keeping, uh, trying to maintain this, you know, clarity of tone as well yeah, yeah, while yeah. doing it. So I don't think in a performance I would do it all with this articulation, but just trying to use the piece as like a way to practice it a bit more. Yeah, so. yeah. At one point <laughs> in my practice, uh, someone was vacuuming upstairs. I would think I was practicing number... No, it must have been number one because they were very long tones. And yeah, yeah, I can play a little, maybe a little audio diary of it. No. Five, day five. I'm currently working through one, number two in the second octave. And 
the vacuum cleaner above me is playing in the same key as my G sharps. <laughs> <laughs> should I use my tuner or should I use the vacuum cleaner above? <laughs> yep. So that was that. I, I mean, it was just funny because I was. Found that. <laughs> <laughs> it was because I mean, it was just like I would be doing a nice long G sharp, and then the vacuum was just right along with me. <laughs> so I would stop, and I'm like, "Is that an echo? <laughs> like, what's going on?" <laughs> It was so funny. So, and at this point, you know, I was being quite serious and it was just kind of nice to have a little laugh break and just reflect on sometimes, you know, we're doing these things and then just like bringing it back. <laughs> but, um, but that was fun. So that happened in my week too. Oh, verdict. But yeah, so verdict time. Verdict da -da -da. time. So the, Jen. Think, what do I think of Sonority? Okay, I really liked the pace of it. I liked how I had time nothing could go on automatic pilot it was all about thinking about what you were doing and chugging away at all the like little detail work uh, and i mean you're practicing you are practicing a lot more than the tone itself you're also practicing breath control dynamics um i mean it was still like what is the ideal amount of time to practice tone because yes it took anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how diligent you were on doing all of the repetitions that you're supposed to do. And it, it is just tone work, like, but then you've got all your finger work as well to do. So hmm. I don't know. I think it's, well, it depends on, I guess, what you're trying to work on that week. I mean, yeah. I totally agree that it also depends on, you know, how much time, how much time you have to practice and yeah. what are your, what, uh, what do you hope to accomplish that week? Because if you are performing a bunch of lyrical pieces, it's probably more important to put in a little extra tone practice. Whereas if you're just really chugging through a bunch of technical work for whichever, like a competition. Like, what's your goal for that week? Yeah. And that this time. Yeah. And then build your practice from there. So maybe choosing, picking and choosing what would best to help your practice prerogative that day. So. Yeah. 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 So I don't know, maybe 20, 20 minutes. I don't know. 20 minutes. Tw Excellent. 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, as long as a piece of string, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, verdict? Um, my verdict, I really enjoyed this. I think going forward, I'm going to continue. I, I like that uh, Marcel or uh, Mr. Moise broke it down into five steps. So it's like, five parts and so say you wanted to do all five parts a day you could spend 12 minutes on each one along for a water break <laughs> Six, eight, ten. no no water break sorry <laughs> watch me try to do math <laughs> um and still managed to accomplish it in an hour um like for me the articulation was pretty quick to go through um number mm. three Mm -hmm. um and then as much like and i would probably um maybe i would change um going in number five into something that i was doing that week that was already lyrical so if i was Ooh. doing bear number two yeah. maybe instead of i like, played in the key but then also change it and uh played in a different key so change yeah. up the keys and make it a little more applicable to uh, or like use what he says about how to practice it, you know, making the phrasing maybe a little harder, taking it at a slower tempo, you know, and really focusing on like repeat, like the different ways to repeat it each time. But yeah. maybe not use what he uses in the book, but supplement it with um, other lyrical passages I might be working on that week. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, I really enjoyed it. I think for me, I would probably, for me, tone is always an area of, Mm, that needs a lot of attention mm -hmm. so I would probably maybe 30 minutes a week at least normally I do spend a decent amount of time on tone but like at least like I think going forward I'm going to try and do at least 30 if not an hour when time out is permits on tone mm. I think that would be really good so yeah. Um, but yeah, I felt as though this one, whereas last method, the Tafanil and Gobert method, it focused primarily on just um, really getting your fingers under control with um, technical passages. This one was all about tone and yep. 
Yeah. Um, creating a beautiful sound when you're articulating, creating a beautiful sound when you're doing dynamics, creating a beautiful sound when you're playing a piece and so on and so forth, all the different areas. And that was really great. And so this would be a great supplement to do along with maybe Tau Fanel and Gobert. But yeah, <laughs> finding a good balance. So, yeah, find, finding the Because if you balance. do that with the other piece, you will be practicing four to five hours a day. <laughs> before even learning before... any of the, the notes you need to learn. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I so. think, yeah, the same. Probably, yeah, I'd probably keep keep doing this regularly in my practice, but just maybe not in such a huge quantity. Mm. All right. So would Boys. we recommend this book to other people? I think we would. I think we definitely recommend this book to other people. Excellent. It's great, but be prepared to be to be shocked and slightly alarmed. Oh man, and I think that's it for this week. Uh, Thanks to Ivan Potter who did our amazing artwork for our podcast. Thanks to all the online resources where I try and link some of them in our show notes. Thanks to y'all for listening. And you can find us now on Google, um, iTunes, soon to be YouTube, SoundCloud, and iHeartRadio, I think, and Spotify. Look for us in the world and we will be out there. All right. And come back next week and we'll do another one. (laughs) Okay. Bye. (laughs)